Is token standard just a pretentious way to say token type? Sometimes, but there are also two different things. So for example, you could create a fungible type token on Ethereum without following any ERC standards like ERC20. But the problem you'd probably run into is that your new token won't be compatible with anything else on the Ethereum ecosystem, such as DeFi or wallets, and therefore wouldn't have much use. This is where the standards come into play, and the name makes a lot more sense. The standards are simply that, something to follow to make sure that whatever smart contract you're trying to make, such as a fungible or non-fungible token, is able to interact with everything else already built on the Ethereum ecosystem so that it has all the use cases you were hoping for it. Before we start, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share. Also, if you're commenting, try to say something interesting and leave your Femex UID, and we'll send a $15 trading bonus to those best comments. ERC20 is the basic standard for fungible tokens, meaning those tokens that are not treated as unique from each other. Fungible tokens include things like tokens used as currency, points in a game, shares of a company, etc. Here on CoinMarketCap, we can find the top Ethereum tokens, which are Tether, USD Coin, Shiba Inu, Wrapped Bitcoin, Uniswap, and Chainlink. People will often refer to all of these as ERC20 tokens, which isn't entirely inaccurate, even though they may have been made with a more recent token standard. Because the more recent token standards are always made to be backwards compatible with ERC20, which is the original fungible token standard, so that everything can work together in the ecosystem. For example, ERC777 is the luckiest sounding token standard, and its purpose is quite straightforward to improve ERC-20. It achieves this primarily by being backwards compatible with ERC-20, but introduces hooks, where the receiving contract must register the hook to signal compatibility. If no hook is registered, the transaction will automatically abort, which prevents accidental transfers to incompatible contracts. ERC721 is the basic standard for non-fungible tokens, or NFTs, which are tokens that are all treated as unique from each other and whose value will differ based on traits like age, rarity, or unique token ID. Some of the top uses of NFTs are for representing ownership of digital art, of music, or of in-game items or characters. Another area where NFTs could see a lot of potential use in the future is for representing ownership of a physical item, such as a deed to a house being put in NFT form. And the last popular token standard we'll look at today is ERC-1155, which is a particularly functional contract that can include any combination of fungible and non-fungible tokens. This allows more efficient batch transfers of all the assets you want to transfer. In addition, this token increases transfer safety by implementing the hooks and additional rules to protect against accidents when making these big transfers. There are many more token standards that can be put to use by those developing on Ethereum, and more will continue getting created over time as people come out with new uses for smart contracts. Most of these standards not only ensure that they're compatible with others of the same standards, but they also ensure that they're compatible with other parts of the Ethereum ecosystem, such as other kinds of contracts, and are backwards compatible with previous standards. That's all for today. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, go ahead and give us a like, give us a comment, subscribe, and share it with your friends. Thanks for watching. See you next time.